Okay, this is the best thing is we get to build. We'll talk about something with um, mathematics and then we'll build it. So, uh, so let's talk about what a brachistochrone is. So, analyzing the brachistochrone. Okay, now. Uh, it's definitely one of these f mysteriously puzzles. Math is evil. Math is not evil. <laughs> Mandry. Mandry's like, when do we blow it up, though? If you would like to know more about the Lagrange mechanics, about the math that I'm talking about, we are doing a series on it Wednesday. Actually, this came up in the series. Uh, it's the, supposed to be what we what we're doing next. So if you uh, started the series with us on Wednesday, then you uh, know that this is the next step in the series. If you have not done it, you can check out the YouTube channel, exclamation mark, YT, uh, and you can find the, um, and you can find the uh, first episode on there. Okay, now, let's do this. So, we, what we want to do, what's, if we have two points, and we are going to try to figure out not only the shortest distance between those two points, but the shortest time for something to travel to those from one point to the next. So if this is the if this is point one and this is point two, and we're gonna have some path from point now one to point two. It with entropy. <laughs> Andre, I've just started. Um, I will. I won't explain it with entropy. Probably not. Actually. Um, but if you want to go from point one to point two, you want to know, we did the shortest distance on Wednesday, but now what about the shortest time? Is there a way we could talk about the shortest time between points one and point two? So let's suppose that we're in some sort of gravitational well, like Earth, right? Like gravitation on the surface of the Earth. Uh, and we want to figure out if we could make some sort of object that we could transfer... Uh, we're going to take a ball and we're going to put it here and it's going to have to end up at two at from point one to point two and we want the shortest time for that to happen. Now before we figured out the shortest distance, the, for the shortest distance was a straight line, but we're going to soon find out that that might not be the shortest time. So let's do the mathematics and then we'll figure out uh, and then we'll build, we'll build uh, an apparatus that has three different paths on it. So let's talk math so we did have an example where we talked about the shortest time from one to two from uh, some event or from some point one in space to some point two in space but we did talking about light and what we found out was you could get this formula right where you have some infinitesimally small length divided by velocity and you could just oh let me put this on my arm so you guys can talk to me if anybody has any questions or they wanted to know what is going on you guys can just sort of talk to me and we'll uh and I should be able to see it while I'm at the board. As soon as I pull it up here. Someone someone write something so that I can see you guys. Now, so this is what we started with. And we want to find the shortest distance between straight paths. So what can we do with this velocity? Obviously, the distance is going to be what it is. But can we talk about the velocity? And we, we can. We're going to need something that you guys learned back in introductory physics, which is energy conservation. Um, okay, so we want to talk about energy conservation. That's a good way to start. So how, it, when I teach introductory physics, um, I always start with this and write this probably about 40 times throughout the semester. But we always have the potential initial plus the kinetic initial has to equal the potential final plus the kinetic final. This is, this is what you guys, do, you've done this. You've done this, we know what it is. We know that the kinetic initial is going to be zero because we're going to start from rest at the top of the slope. And we know that the potential is going to be zero at the bottom because we're going to define this to be the bottom. Or we could define it to be the top and then use negatives. Either way, it doesn't really matter however you want to do it. Um, but then we can find out that we'll have mgh is the potential energy at the beginning, which is equal to one half mv squared which is the potential or is the kinetic at the end don't and forget about the square for the velocity again <laughs> thank you but then we can solve for the velocity and this h i'm going to recast the h as some height and i will show you how in just a moment but we'll write two um two g and then we'll write y just for simplicity 
So basically what we're going to do is now, we're going to have some model, we'll call this the x-axis and this the y-axis. Okay. And this will be our 1.1 and this will be our 0.2. And then the goal is going to be to find the shortest time in some sort of path to get from one to the other. But now, we have something that's kind of convenient. <laughs> Everyone forgets the square. I did it a bunch and so do a lot of my students, but um, it's important to remember to write the square for the velocity. Now, uh, let's figure out that, well, because, okay, so because we have a Y in here, we're gonna redefine the H to be just from like one height here to the next height there. We're going to have a, uh, a we're gonna use Y as the variable. Okay, so that means that last time we did a lot of the y of x is equal to the path that we want to solve. But this time we're going to say that the x is a function of y, and that's the path that we're going to try to solve, and then we'll figure out both the x and the y when we're done. But can we do that? Well, sure. Let's, uh, let's erase this and keep writing. Oh, by the way, if you guys are new here, join the, you can exclamation mark discord, hop in the discord where I put all the notes for these things that I do like this. You can grab the notes for this right off the discord and it will, you won't have to sit there and try to like write anything down if you're actually trying to write it down or if you just want to look at it, you can grab it there yourself. And all that goes for all of the discussion series that we do. We'll leave that up though for now. <clears throat> Okay, so now, if we were to look at our infinitesimally small line length, uh, remember we had the, uh, I'll leave this integral up here for a little bit, because uh, it will be relevant in a moment. Lower B, there we go, from 1 to 2. Uh, okay, so now we can take this infinitesimally short line piece. Remember, we're trying to find some line here. We're going to take an infinitesimally small point right here of the line, and we want to integrate that up into the length one to two. Uh, and what does that look like? Well, in flat space time, which is what we're approximating, what we're working with, <clears throat> we want dx squared plus dy squared, which uh, we found out we could recast it as the following, x, of, uh, x prime of y squared plus one dy. Now, again, if you're wondering this step, we did this on Wednesday, so feel free to either take a look at the notes um, from the Discord or hop onto the YouTube to check that out. But we did solve this uh, on Wednesday as well. So, uh, from here, we can plug this into our uh, integral over there, and we'll have the time from one to two is given by one over two g, the square root of one over two g. Uh, from 0 to y, we'll just call it, or let's call it y2, I guess. And then uh, the square root of x prime of y plus 1 over the square root of y, dy. Now, this, one, this the square root of 2gy, I pulled from our velocity. So notice here we have our ds over the velocity, and this square root of 2gy is the velocity. Let's remind ourselves what we're actually trying to figure out here. And uh, so we have some action, S. Uh, we didn't really define it as action on Wednesday yet, but it will be soon. The, this S is just an integral of a function, y, y, x, dx, with this y is y prime. This y prime, of course, is the derivative of y with respect to x. Oh, I did forget a square. Good looks. <laughs> there it is. Thank you very much. Um, there, we got it there. We just didn't make it there. Okay, very cool. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so now a reminder of what the S is. Um, <clears throat> we have the F, Y of Y prime and X and DX. So what we are trying to do is we parameterized it with an alpha. And by parameterizing S, we could recast our integration, our integral, um, as the following. We had the function of Y plus alpha Ada, uh, that was our one variable now, because now remember uh, from Wednesday we use this this parameter as like an extra function, so we could take any function and then shrink it so that we could get the y, which was the shortest path. That was the goal, was to find y, so it was the shortest. Um, and then we can do this again. Uh, 
and X and then DX. There we go. So this was what we found on Wednesday. We found this parameterized uh, parameterized version of S. That way we could find, we could take the derivative with respect to alpha and we could set that to zero. Uh, and that was a minimum. But before we set it to zero, we actually took the derivative of the action, which was the, uh, the integral from one, from X1 to X2. This was a partial of the function with respect to alpha dx. And then we found that this would, was equal to uh, x1, x2, eta, partial of f, partial of y, plus eta prime, partial of f, partial of y prime, uh, dx, and this was equal to zero. <clears throat> Now, can you guys see everything? Yeah, you can see everything. Oh, it's just a sign. Okay, I'll take a look for sure. Uh, people are scared of circles, but be special creatures are scared of squares that in fact don't even look like a square. <laughs> hey, RPG! Good to see ya! Hope anyone understands my humor. Um, fortunately, I don't know if I understand it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alamander. I'll have to read it slowly uh, in a second here. Uh, but hello, RPG, it's good to see you. So anyways, what we figured out is when we solved this formula right here, we got the Euler-Lagrange equations. And they look like the following. The partial of f with respect to y minus the derivative with respect to x, partial of f, with respect to y prime, and this was all equal to zero. So we found the Euler-Lagrange equations on Wednesday, that was the goal. Once we found the Euler-Lagrange equations, these can be our equations of motion that will minimize our S action, right? And that's the goal. That's the goals we want to use this to find the minimum action of this. And now instead of looking at distance, we're gonna look at time, okay? Which is perfectly applicable. So that was what we did on Wednesday. And now what we're gonna do is use that to solve this, okay? Again, the big difference is now our Y's and our X are flipped. Uh, here was what we had on Wednesday, and now we're dealing with something that looks like uh, F of X, X prime, and Y. So we're just flipping the variables, but nothing really matters changing it. <clears throat> okay, so let's go and keep working through this. Now we have the Euler-Lagrange equations. That's what we did on Wednesday. Um, and again, if you want to see that, you can check out the video on the YouTube. <clears throat> Oofa. Okay. Now, uh, so to minimize the variables, we want to talk about the action S, Y1, Y2 of F of X, X prime, and Y, DY. Uh, this function, now remember this, the procedure was to evaluate the function, uh, evaluate the derivatives, and then solve the differential equation. Uh, and then, so first we have to establish what the function is. This function itself is equal to x prime squared plus 1 divided by the square root of y. And uh, that was the function. So now if we want to do the following, so considering this, we're going to rewrite this with our new variables or our, I guess I should say our relabeled variables, df of dx. And now we're gonna move this over to the other side. So that should be equal to the derivative with respect to y of um, partial of f with respect to x prime. <clears throat> so let's see here. So let's, uh, so this function does not have an x variable in it. Right? This is x prime and this is y. Our variables are x, x prime, and y. So because there's no x in here, the derivative of f with respect to x is going to be 0. And now we just have the partial of f with respect to x prime. So we'll rewrite our d, dy. And we'll just have to take the derivative of this, which you take the derivative, you can pull the constant out front, so you'd have 1 over the square root of y. And then the derivative of this is the derivative of the inside with respect to the whole thing, so you'd end up with 2x prime 
divided by the square root of y times the square root of x prime squared plus 1. So now if you take the derivative of anything with respect and the answer is 0, then we know that this has to be equal to a constant, right? That's the only thing that will let the derivative of it be equal to 0. So uh, we're going to do a few things like this 2. We're going to just scrap the 2. We're going to square both sides because why not? And what we'll end up getting is something that looks like this. Uh, <clears throat> where is it? OK, uh, it's y, uh, y prime squared divided by y. I don't know if I wrote this in my notes. y prime squared plus 1. Is that right? Yes. Oh, I partially wrote it in the notes. Uh, I have an extra one exponent of 1 half there that shouldn't be there. Uh, all the way down at the, at the bottom of page 2, where it's equal to 1 over 2a. That minus 1 half should not be there. Or that uh, 1, yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. So, erase that. I have it right on the board this time. It's equal to 1 over 2a. And this is just the constant that we chose. We're just going to set it equal to some constant. We chose this constant kind of for simplicity. Um, <clears throat> but yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought this was supposed to be a building strip. It is, NC, but first we're going to solve the Burkistochrone, and then we're going to build one. Don't worry. We're, doing, we're building our, our math skills, and then we're building our, uh, our we're going we're gonna to build by subtraction of fingers. Okay, now, we have our constant, we have our function, so let's solve it. And we can find out that x prime is equal to the square root of y divided by 2a minus y. Okay, so now we have x prime, but that's still just the derivative of x. So we want to find <clears throat> what x is. Remember, this is x prime, so it's the dx dy. So that means x is equal to the integral of this function, 2a minus y dy. And, uh, <clears throat> And this is what we need. We just need to figure out this integral. This has a nice trig substitution, if you want to believe it. If you're um, an integral master, uh, like I am not, you can find out relatively easily this has a nice trig substitution. y is equal to a 1 minus cosine theta. And we'll end up with the following function of x x is going to be a times theta minus sine theta plus some constant c. Let's get rid of this part of this. Plus some constant c. Constant c. <laughs> New term, much study UK time, so to me classes during Eric. Oh, I'm sorry, Rooster, that's a bummer. Yeah, lockdown lectures at 7 p.m. mostly. Wow. Okay, that's crazy, Rusta. Sorry to hear that, man. Okay, now, so this is our y and our x. Uh, oh, so we can, well, we have to figure out what, what, oh, we did figure out what y is. Okay, cool. So then, if we do our boundary conditions, x uh, equals y equals zero, right here at the origin, right? That's what we decided. This was y, so here was this. Um, then, we can get rid of the constant. So then we find out that x equals a theta minus sine of theta, and y equals, uh, oh, y equals a 1 Dan's minus query. cosine theta. I love the brachiosaurus. So then the question was, um, the question was, <clears throat> What is this shape? And someone answered it. Andre, you want to say it again? So, does it so uh, the cycloid produced by a circle. If you don't know what a cycloid is, a cycloid has a shape where 
So we solved this. So this is good. So we did the integral. Everything checks out. The answers are good. Let's uh, erase this then. <clears throat> so if you have a circle, and you mark the edge of it, as the circle rolls, it will produce a shape like this. And this is a cycloid. So this is kind of what Justin was talking about with the bubble, sh the bubble structure. <laughs> right as always. <laughs> He's such a sarcastic punk. <laughs> but there it is. That's the shape we need to build for our our brachistochrone that is um for our brachistochrone that's not or that's like the fastest path, right? The the shortest amount of time. <laughs>